and uh, President Omar al-Bashir has stepped down and is currently under house arrest. Well, I have joining me Global Affairs Analyst Sam Fate. Uh, good to have you on the news. Well, it, it's been a long wait, to, uh, you know, trying to find out if really this was a, a military coup or not. But it, it has become clearer now. Uh, this two-year transition period means uh, that uh, there will be some level of military presence, which is contrary to what uh, Sudanese people right now want. They're saying nobody uh, who has been part of the, the government in the last 30 years or with military background should um, survive or take over from al-Bashir? Well, I think that's a very important and uh, critical part of what their movement or their revolution is currently all about. Uh, because, for example, uh, even Al, who is the defense minister, being the chairman of the Transitional Council, means in two years, he's already a civilian. I mean, in two years, he may even qualify and he may even decide to run for president. And that likely means that the same old people that were in uh, the Basir regime are likely to be recycled uh, into the new regime. Uh, does that mean any of this is going to change? Now, of course, it is essential that right away the entire transitional council be handed over to a civilian government, to, to an entire civilian government and the military go back to the barracks with the support of the international community. And probably then they can come forward to make security reforms, the civil service reforms, and other needed reforms within these two years that they need, and then head back to transparent and free and fair elections in the, uh, in the country. Uh, so, but having the military presence and having the transitional council is likely before the end of the day. We may hear, there are a lot of things developing. We may hear that the constitution may be suspended. And then that means that there will be opportunities for martial laws and military decrees. And then this could be, they, they could say they want to cut corruption and they want to make sure that things that, are, that have gone wrong have been right at this time. And uh, the movement is trying to prevent that. And uh, I can see their fear and the very reason why they will say no to anybody in the military involved in this. And of course, um, al-Bashir remains a wanted man uh, for genocide and killings uh, over the last 30 years that he has been at the helm of affairs uh, in Sudan. Um, the ICC wants him to answer to these questions. What do you think is likely to play out uh, with this um, arrest of top uh, military brass and top government functionaries like himself? It is something we have to continue to follow very, very closely because some things that are going to happen will be very, very dramatic and very, very shocking. Now, part of the reasons why Omar al-Bashir decided that he is not, uh, uh, he, he, he was unwilling to step aside was because of the fear that he may be yanked over to the ICC. But let us also remember that um, the military didn't necessarily say this was a coup. They are first in their initial the impression that they're trying to give us is okay um we kind of went into a discussion with this man and he decided to step down does this mean that they have an agreement where they are going to protect al-bashir and obviously would al-bashir be allowed to go to a different country where he feels he will be protected and out of reach uh, of the international criminal court so these are all questions that of course we have to we, we we have to follow we don't know exactly what is going to happen at this time but that's al basir's biggest fear and the international and the international criminal court is facing a lot of challenges from african countries they are they, they are wanting to withdraw and also one may, one may encourage al basir to face the icc because he is likely to get away with it and examples are if in the like Kenya versus the International Criminal Court. I'm thinking about William Ruto and uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. You look at uh, Bemba from Congo. If somebody, especially like Bemba, could get away from the ICC, if somebody like Lauren Bagbo could get away from the ICC, that means there's some sort of precedence that he is likely to get out, get out of the situation. Because in international law, unlike criminal law at, at local levels, at local, local judicial levels, international criminal law requires evidence and certain things to be presented, presented in such a way that it is hard to get those evidences and they make All it right. away. But Thank you stream. very much. Sam Fate is a global affairs analyst speaking to us on developments in Sudan. Now let's take a look at past coups.